Nigeria and neighboring countries Benin and Niger have agreed to set up a joint border patrol force to tackle smuggling between the West African countries. They said in a communique on Thursday, foreign ministers from the three countries met to discuss smuggling following a decision by the regional giant Nigeria, which has Africa's largest economy and biggest population, to close its land borders to trade until at least January 31, 2020. Nigeria launched a partial border closure in August to tackle smuggling of rice and other goods. And last month, the head of customs confirmed that all trade via land borders had been halted indefinitely. The joint communique from the meeting in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, said that Benin Republic and Niger delegations had appealed for the immediate reopening of the Nigerian border. And now, Olufemi Kainde, goodness, he's the CEO, Agrobags Nigeria Limited, joins us in the studio to look at this development. It's good to have you join us. Good to have you too. So I I'm thinking to myself, um, from the joint communique that, um, you know, brought up this whole idea, I'm wondering, Benin and Niger has um, appealed for immediate reopening. How do you think the Nigerian government would take this? Because what this is being done for is in the best interest of Nigeria. How will reopening it help us and our economy? Well, I think, or I believe, the border closure has ignited mixed reaction among business owners mm -hmm. and people in the society today. And we both know that the world is a global village that encourages financial liberation. Mm -hmm. If the government decides to change ground, I think I'm fully in support. Why, why, why? why Take for example, that? I'm not going to be on my countryside. Let's talk about Ghanaian Alamon Bitter. I know you know that drink. I don't even mm -hmm. know if you heard about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I heard they made a loss of um, $2 million ever since the border has been closed, which brings about people losing their jobs, which brings about poverty in a way in their country. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, the border closure in Nigeria has affected people in terms of inflation, price. For example, a bag of rice that was being sold at a minimum rate is now 27,000 Nigeria about, if I'm not mistaken. Well, again, we're at, around the Yuletide season, everything simply skyrockets. Don't you think that maybe that would be part of the reason? I want you to take note that whenever there's inflation in Nigeria, there's always an increase. There's always an increase. And this has not helped to solve problem in Nigeria. It's helping the poor. The masses are crying. The border closure has not helped the masses in any way. Rather, it has brought about increase. And we know uh, rice is mainly consumed by most Nigerians. But, but the, the idea was to reduce smuggling. So do you think that there has been a, a substantial reduction in smuggling uh, of rice, especially? Because I'm guessing that's why Mr. President did this in the first well, instance. I must say, talking about smuggling, that to me has nothing to do with the border. We should, I well, feel... It has everything to do with the border. It has to do with, it has to do with the competence of our custom officers. Yes. So you're saying that our customs are not competent enough. Yes. They're not doing their job the, well in that They are in the know. I expect them to do the needful. If our custom officers are doing the needful, nobody's smuggling anything. So now you're saying the border is closed because they're smuggling things into our country. I would let you understand that as we still speak, things are still being smuggled into our country, if that's the excuse. My family is in Babana in the north. Sometimes I come out at night, one o'clock, when I have nothing to do. I still see people move. They see deal. They still cross the border. What do you want to say about that? So, so what the government is doing now is like pouring water on the back of a chicken. It's exactly. not making any it's, change whatsoever. It's the other way around. The government should focus on customs, bringing out competent custom officers to work for us. Mm -hmm. If they don't do that, I'm sorry, it's a no-no. Let's talk about local production. You just mentioned that you have a, a, a farm. Yeah. Do you produce rice by any means? Well, we empower our farmers. We plant. Okay. Yeah. So how can we encourage the production of rice? How can we make sure that rice produce increases more in Nigeria? I mean, we have local rice. We have the very famous Abakliki rice. And recently, yeah, but... there's rice in Cross River also. Yeah. And several other places. So how do we... Put that on a large scale. What is the problem and why are we not making it so big? Well, first and foremost, I would say the problem is actually with Nigerian parents seeing agriculture as a second option. 
like a plan B. You know, most parents say, I don't want my child to be a farmer. That's where the problem started from. I want, to, I want him to be an engineer. So it's, being a farmer is not something that is prestigious? No. It's your will. There's more to be you being a farmer. If we can encourage our youth to go into agriculture, which is our, which is our widest pursuit, we'll go a long way first. Secondly, if the government can come in in terms of providing proper structure for agriculture, that's for the youth. For example, the milling machine. I would know that the government embraces agriculture. If we have maybe 20 milling machines in different local governments, that's a whole lot. Now tell me, do you think the youth will not find this attractive? Do you think they will not want to work? Do you think they won't want to try farming or go into it? But the government, on the other hand, will tell you that they're doing a lot in terms of agriculture and they're giving small, they're loans. giving farmer loans, loans, soft loans here and there. Is that not something that is helping? And grants. Mm -hmm. Well, we hear of this on the news that the government are giving loans and all. But we're not seeing it. We're not seeing it. If they're giving loans, I'm 100%. I trust Nigerian youth. They'll go for it. You know, there's no job anywhere. Some people will tell you there are jobs. It's just and that they're not is, the type of jobs that they want to do. And farming is quite, if, if, that, if they're loans and grants, then we have no issues. A young boy walked up to me a few days ago while I was in Abuja. He said he's so much interested in agriculture. He was ready to work and all of that and asked me a question. I said, do you have a land to start? That's the most important thing. It's not about your skill acquisition and all. And he said, no, government can also provide this. At subsidised rates? Yes, at subsidised rates. Although I know the constitution says that land belongs to the state, but then we also, as Nigerians, say that land is something we get ancestrally. So these lands are passed down. How many people are let, willing to let go of the biggest thing, which is real estate these days, for farming? I'll bet you that in no time, in like 10 years from now, we're going to divert from real estate into agriculture. Finally, before I let you go, um, how soon do you think we as Nigerians, whether yet farmers or entrepreneurs in farming or agriculture, can play catch up with the rest of the world? Well, with the look of things, I feel 10 years from now. You think it's going to catch up? Yes, we'll be good to fly. Okay. Yes, Olufemi well, Kainde, goodness, is an agric expert and he is a farmer. Thank you very much for speaking with us. You're welcome.